So we are going to talk about VR, AR, and 360 video. Um, my headline will pay off about two thirds. I'm not going to talk as much about AR. Um, but this, this whole time that we've been here, we've been talking about video, we've been talking about storytelling, but we haven't really talked about the advances that we've made in actual video technology and what we can now do in the space and figuring out when the right time it is to jump into it, to, to encourage our, our clients to invest in this technology and these types of assets, and then we have to figure out how to distribute it and how to make it uh, valuable. So just a level set, we're already talking about 2035, which is insane, um, but VR and AR is expected to be like a $2 trillion industry by that time. So I don't think it's gonna go the way of the 3D television. Um, Microsoft is in on it. They are starting to back various VR headsets with a dollar amount around $300, which is attainable. Uh, PlayStation has finally launched their VR headset. They're expecting to ship three million units by the end of the year. And um, how many of you guys play Pokemon Go? Come on, there's 50 million people that have downloaded this app, so I know some of you are in this room. Okay. Um, but there's projections for AR uh, apps to reach two billion heading into next year, so I think the adoption is really, really high. Another thing to discuss is what's the difference between all three of these? So it's really easy for brands and for people to uh, feel like they are creating virtual reality when they have a 360 video asset, but they're really completely different. Uh, 360 video is, is like advanced video. It's, it can provide different um, aspect ratios to whatever the content is. It allows someone to explore and to look around. It's great. There are a lot of places now, publishers that accept 360 video, and you can put it in different places, and it can be a nice immersive experience. Augmented reality, there's, well, there's Pokemon Go, um, which is really just taking your, your existing experience and just augmenting it. So <laughs> that technology has actually been around for a long time. It's not really that new. But now we're advancing into virtual reality, which is a completely immersive experience. It takes you away into another place. I was actually in uh, Croatia earlier this year in Split. And I was, they have a hotel that's part of Diocletian's palace. And as I was walking through, there's a VR setup. There are ladies of a certain age sitting there being immersed in, in what it was 500 years ago. So it's got legs, I would have to say. Um, so what we're, I'm gonna show you today, I'm gonna show you some examples of what we've done with a few of our travel and um, tourism clients because it's a really immersive experience when you have that kind of content to work with. Uh, we're gonna show you 360 video of Hilton and then talk about how we uh, distributed it. What do you see when you turn around? Look harder. This isn't just a hotel. It's your launch pad, the place where everything starts. Because when you stay at Hilton, you can go anywhere you want. So what will it be? Where will your next trip take you? Will you dive into the unexplored? Learn to breathe underwater? So that asset is actually two and a half minutes long. So it's beautiful. It's a property in Barbados, so it's very easy, easy content to distribute. So one of the immediate places we looked at is Facebook, YouTube, it lives there. Right? We did it as a, a sponsored video post in Facebook and then also mid-roll and pre-roll in, in YouTube. Um, then, we took it to mobile and tablet through another, another partner. We also worked with New York um, yeah, the New York Times as well to distribute the content. So we had about four partners that we were able to use to distribute out the different content. Um, and then we tried to measure it. So that's where things got a little bit tricky. So there are still a lot of limitations in the space. So I, I, like I said, it was a two and a half minute video, which is quite long, and it's a long time for you to be playing around and looking. So our average time spent was around 32 seconds, which I still think is pretty darn good. Um, and the completion rates were a little bit low, but again, we're talking about a very long asset here. Um, there, the engagement metrics, though, this is what you expect, 360 video, you're expecting people to engage with your content. You want to know what they're doing, but there are such limitations in the space. When I was pulling together all the numbers for this from the team, I was like, what do you, what do you mean we don't have any engagement metrics at all, other than completion rates. 
and even that was a little bit weak, so only half the partners even had that. So I think there's a lot of room for advancement in terms of measurement. Uh, I would say that about at least half of our brands have already experienced or, or played with 360 video. Have you guys experienced that? Have any of the brands out here built any 360 assets? Also had trouble finding measurement? <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, so that's 360 video. Now uh, we'll move on and I'm gonna talk about virtual reality. So one of the big questions, I was on a panel last week and one of the questions from the crowd was, well, do we feel like What's the demographic gonna be? Is it really gonna be males 18 to 34 that are gonna be consuming this content? Is it just the gamers? Uh, based on this, it looks like there are a lot of adopters. I have to say that I, I agree with these numbers. My uh, father-in-law, who is of a certain age, very active, the VR headset. He, every time he comes over to the house, he puts it on and looks at it. We're talking about people that don't even have Wi-Fi in their house, so very interested in, in VR. Over 23 million Americans have actually tried it before we even entered this year. So I think it's, it's very much um, here to stay. But we have to really change the way we're thinking about VR though. It's really about how the brain works because the experience is so immersive. It can really trick you. Have any of you guys done the walk? Have you tried the VR experience of the walk? Did you do it successfully? It's a little scary, if you know what I'm talking about. Um, so the idea behind it is to make sure that you that you're not establishing rules. You're gonna explore, you're gonna use it for what it is, you're gonna find a way to break through from our typical ad assets. So I got from our, we have a expert in the field, uh, Dario Rossidi is the head of our zero code um, SBU within the agency and he is very much involved in the overall development of virtual reality and how to work with it in the space. And these are some best practices that he has is, he is found as he's worked with many of our clients in developing assets. It's one is that we need to deliver on the presence and on innovation. So make it exactly what it sounds like it should be. And make sure that the brand is enabling the experience as opposed to being the focal point. I mean, there are some brands that will lend themselves to being a good focal point, especially if it's what I'm gonna show you next is around Hawaii. Um, but it's also making sure that you're exploring all the different types of opportunities. It could be movie, it could be sports, it could be art, it could be gaming. And then there are some don'ts. So it should be fairly obvious, even though it may not be to some brands, that you can't use what you're using everywhere else in this space. It's just not gonna work, it's not gonna translate. And you also have to be prepared to make sure the experience is available through all different types of headsets, whether it's a Google Cardboard or it's a Samsung Gear or it's a you know, uh, uh, PlayStation VR headset. And then making sure that the partner that you are choosing to build out the asset actually has experience in it and knows what they're doing. It's complicated, it's not an easy thing to develop and you can't typically go to your usual agency, creative agency to build out this type of asset a lot of times. So now, Knowing that those are the pillars and the things that we need to keep in mind when developing these assets, our uh, Hawaii tourism client has decided to invest in it. It's like, okay, well let's take what is traditionally researched online uh, through pictures and travel websites and let's actually make it an immersive experience that people can connect with and really engage with the idea of going to Hawaii. Our friends have all shared their Hawaii vacations with us their honeymoons, their adventures, all of it. And we've followed their journey with every heart and thumbs up along the way. We've traveled with them through their posts, their vlogs, and even their new toys. But maybe for once, instead of living vicariously through their eyes, we can start to live vicariously through our own and stop visiting where they've already been, but choose where we actually want to go. We're not island hopping in this experience. We are island soaring. And once we land at our destinations, we can take it all in. Whether it's catching your first party wave with a pro stand-up paddler, experiencing a one-of-a-kind spiritual moment with a local singer, chasing one waterfall after another with a Hogulea crew member, jamming along a dramatic coastline with another local talent. We can take in all that Hawaii has to offer. Every single bit of it.
So we actually just launched this asset this year at the um, Hawaii Tourism Conference. Uh, debuted very largely, had a lot of great press, a lot of great reviews. The tourism, the Hawaii tourism industry loved it. Um, it's two islands right now. It's Oahu and the Big Island. There's going to be two more islands that we're going to be doing a little bit uh, next year. So now that we have this amazing content, it's debuted, it's done what the client wanted it to. It's now figuring out, all right, how can we support this with paid media? How can we give this legs so that it can, can go forward? So as of today, we just launched um, with a partner called Immersive. And this is, this is kind of what it looks like within the video app itself. So whenever uh, someone is within a VR app, and maybe they're leveling up or they're changing content, there's an opportunity for our content to show. And if someone looks directly at it and focuses on it, then the content will play. So they have the option of engaging um, with our content within another ad itself. So this is pretty interesting. I don't know what measurement is going to look like just yet. Right now we're just testing, the, testing out the various formats, but I think it's something that's gonna be pretty interesting. And that's it. That's what I have. You are free to go. <laughs>